Welcome back to Will's Recaps. Today, we delve into a gripping tale set in a world transformed by a cataclysm. No, no. Picture this, 500 years into the future, where civilization has been wiped out, leaving behind a harsh landscape dominated by ruthless tribes vying for power. In this post-apocalyptic realm, the once orderly society has given way to a dog-eat-dog -dog existence, governed by cunning barons who deploy their specialized soldiers to betray and conquer. Amidst this chaos, a young boy endowed with extraordinary abilities navigates the treacherous terrain as he embarks on a quest of mythic proportions. His destination? The fabled city of legends, a beacon of hope in a world shrouded in darkness. Let's unravel the mysteries of this dystopian saga, where survival hinges on alliances forged in the crucible of betrayal, and where the journey towards redemption is fraught with peril at every turn. After a sequence of deadly natural and human-made catastrophes, civilization has been obliterated, with survivors reverting to agriculture to scavenge for sustenance. Half a millennium later, six men and women advance their feudal society by possessing and exchanging resources, acquiring their titles as barons. The previous North American territories are now a domain recognized as the Badlands. To safeguard their residences, the barons have enlisted combatants known as clippers, who engage in combat using bladed weapons, since firearms have been prohibited due to their deadly nature. A clipper named Sonny is traversing a vast expanse on his motorcycle when he halts upon encountering a cluster of human corpses and a wrecked truck at the roadside. Upon inspecting the bodies, he discerns several shattered chains. Using a spyglass, Sonny notices smoke rising from the forest and hurries towards it. There, he encounters a group of nomads camping. Sonny inquires about the smoke, mentioning that the cargo belonged to his baron. The nomads deny any knowledge, but Sonny notices a fancy crate among their belongings and confronts them. A man from the group launches an attack on Sonny, but fails to land a single blow as Sonny swiftly dispatches him. Enraged, the other nomads encircle Sonny and launch a simultaneous assault. However, Sonny's martial prowess proves formidable as he effortlessly takes them down one by one. Afterward, Sonny discovers gold coins adorned with butterfly symbols. Upon opening the crate, a teenager named MK emerges and attempts to flee. Using Bolas, Sonny captures and subdues him. When MK regains consciousness, he observes Sonny burying the bodies. MK reveals that a baron named the Widow paid the nomads to capture him. Sonny enlists MK's help in completing the burial. Subsequently, they journey to the fort, where Sonny introduces MK to children being trained as clippers. Later, they attend a gathering led by Baron Quinn, where he asserts that religion is false, and only he will provide for them, not any deity. Quinn then instructs Sonny to bear his back, revealing numerous tattoos representing each kill Sonny has executed on his behalf. Following the assembly, Sonny briefs Quinn and his son Ryder about the recent events, while MK remains clueless about the widow's motives. Ryder advocates for retaliation, but both Quinn and Sonny reject the idea of instigating a conflict. Subsequently, MK is sent to the pit with the other boys, where he encounters Ajax, who harasses him and steals his necklace. Reacting swiftly, MK retaliates, prompting Sonny to intervene and separate them. Sonny retrieves the necklace from Ajax, only to be surprised by the symbol of a metropolis engraved on it, unaware that Ryder has taken note of his reaction. Later, Sonny returns to his cabin and retrieves a compass bearing the same symbol as MK's pendant. A flashback reveals that he acquired the compass from a deceased child during his youth. Ryder arrives and confiscates the necklace. In the evening, Sonny clandestinely visits another village to meet his lover Vale, a doctor. After spending intimate moments together, Vale continues to educate Sonny in reading. However, she discloses a surprise. She is pregnant. Sonny advises her to get rid of it, fearing that bringing a child into the dangerous environment of the Badlands would be unwise and unsafe. As Vale attempts to persuade him with tales of safe havens beyond the Badlands, Sonny disregards her and departs. Back at the fort, MK is unexpectedly assaulted by Ajax, causing MK's mouth to bleed. The sight of his own blood triggers a transformation in MK's eye, causing it to turn black and move rapidly, enabling him to kick Ajax into a mirror. As the mirror shatters, MK grabs a shard and thrusts it into Ajax's eye, witnessed by Sonny. MK then loses consciousness, prompting Sonny to carry him to his cabin. Upon awakening, MK confesses that this transformation occurs whenever he bleeds, but he is unaware of its nature. This condition has afflicted him since childhood, prompting him and his mother to flee in search of a doctor to cure him. 
However, they were captured by nomads and separated before they could find help. Sonny reveals his compass to MK, who identifies it as originating from Azra, his homeland, a city outside the Badlands, confirming the legend's validity. MK expresses a desire to retrieve his necklace, but Sonny informs him that Ryder possesses it and instructs MK to return to the barracks. Subsequently, Sonny rushes to inform Vale about Azra, but hesitates just outside her door. On his way back, he notices a nearby car and suddenly finds himself surrounded by a group of warriors who launch a coordinated attack. Once again, Sonny demonstrates his prowess by effortlessly combating them. One by one, all the assailants are defeated until only the person in the car remains, who turns out to be the widow. She questions Sonny about MK, but he refuses to cooperate, prompting her to depart. Meanwhile, MK clandestinely enters Ryder's quarters to reclaim his necklace, but Ryder catches him in the act and forcefully retrieves it, shoving MK against the wall. At that moment, Lydia enters and is astonished by the design on the necklace. Subsequently, MK is imprisoned with a death sentence. Sonny visits him to inquire about his risky actions, prompting MK to reveal that the necklace is his only connection to his mother, and he asks Sonny to convey his farewells if he ever finds her. Witnessing MK's emotional distress, Sonny sympathizes with him and decides to set him free. He assists MK in escaping through an underground tunnel that leads out of the fort, unaware of Lydia witnessing their actions. In the evening, Ryder engages in an intimate encounter with Jade, his father's intended third wife. Meanwhile, at a bar, the widow approaches her former advisor, who reaches for his sword but is swiftly disarmed. She seeks to discuss politics, but her attention is drawn to an assassin lurking nearby. The assailant hurls a hand axe at her, but she evades it, resulting in her former advisor being struck instead. In response, the widow swiftly dispatches all the assassins in the room with her dagger skills, leaving only corpses behind. She then interrogates a surviving assailant, who reveals they were sent by Ryder. The following day, MK continues his journey through a forest, where he encounters a series of pillars bearing a butterfly emblem. As he explores, he hears a noise and conceals himself, observing Tilda displaying remarkable hunting skills. Startled, she catches him spying but softens when he reveals his tragic past of losing his farming family to nomads. Tilda offers him some food, and MK notices that her shuriken is fashioned in the shape of butterflies. Suddenly, they hear the sound of barking dogs, signaling the presence of a search party led by Ryder and Sonny. Fortunately, Tilda escorts MK to safety within the widow's territory where the search party cannot pursue them without provoking a potential conflict. Upon reaching the widow's fortress, MK discovers that Tilda is the widow's daughter. MK is directed to take a bath, during which the widow seizes the opportunity to question him, noting inconsistencies in his claim of being a farmer. She inquires about a boy with a necklace and presents him with a picture of Azra, but MK feigns ignorance. Later, three nomads visit the widow but hesitate to join her due to their fear of Quinn. In response, the widow proposes a deal. If Tilda can defeat one of Quinn's men in combat, the nomads must join her. However, if Quinn's man wins, they can claim Tilda for themselves. The nomads agree to the terms. A skirmish ensues between Tilda and one of the nomads, with Tilda swiftly dispatching her opponent with minimal effort. Witnessed by a concealed MK following the bout, the widow instructs Tilda to engage MK in combat and draw blood, hoping to confirm his identity. MK is informed that his training must commence and is left alone with Tilda, who immediately confronts him, holding him at knife point. She questions him about the forest, and MK desperately insists he was only searching for his mother. Touched by pity, Tilda stains MK's cheek with her own blood, advising him to pretend to be injured. MK follows her instructions, feigning pain before leaving, while the widow watches from a distance. Meanwhile, Sonny accompanies Quinn to visit Vale's father, a doctor who informs Quinn of his terminal brain tumor. Quinn orders Sonny to kill the doctor and his wife, but Sonny refuses, prompting Quinn to take matters into his own hands and rush inside to carry out the deed. Later, Quinn orders Sonny to burn down the doctor's house and dispose of the bodies. In the evening, Sonny consoles a grieving Vale, revealing that Quinn murdered her parents out of fear of his illness becoming known. Sonny pledges to protect Vale and her unborn child, promising to escort them out of the Badlands. Meanwhile, in a small town, Ryder hires a worker named Angelica, who possesses a valuable piece of his father's property. When she confesses to obtaining it from nomads who possess a turbine station full of similar items, Ryder becomes aggressive. Outside, a woman discovers a sign left by Angelica. In the dead of night, MK confides in Tilda his need to escape. They search for a hidden passage in the office leading to the woods, but are interrupted by the arrival of the widow and the nomads. To divert suspicion, 
Matilda pretends to be intimate with MK, prompting the Widow to declare him unwelcome. As the Nomads escort MK away, the Widow learns that Ryder has taken the bait. En route, the Nomad leader reveals a wanted poster, rendering MK unconscious and placing him in their vehicle. The following day, Ryder and Sonny survey the turbine station, where a group of Nomads arrives by car. While they investigate the station, MK regains consciousness inside the trunk of the car and uses a butterfly-shaped shuriken given to him by Tilda to free himself. Meanwhile, Ryder and Sonny discover the boxes are empty, only to be ambushed by nomads sent by the Widow. Ryder is ensnared in a chain and begins to suffocate until he loses consciousness, while Sonny engages in combat with the nomads. Despite being outnumbered, Sonny's superior skills enable him to swiftly dispatch the attackers, utilizing the station's layout to his advantage. As he moves to free Ryder, Sonny is caught off guard by the nomad leader. Just as Sonny faces imminent danger, MK intervenes and eliminates the last nomad. MK reveals he knows a way out of the Badlands, but Sonny realizes he cannot leave due to the threat from Quinn. Instead, he resolves to train MK to protect Vale and escort her to Azra. After Ryder receives medical attention, Quinn attempts to attack MK, but Sonny intervenes, explaining that MK saved them and expressing his desire to mentor him as his apprentice. Quinn agrees to mentor MK, but demands his loyalty, also declaring war on the Widow. In the following days, Quinn leads a troop of clippers to attack the Widow's territory. Sonny instructs his students to keep watch while he and the main force infiltrate the fort, swiftly dispatching the soldiers with their blade skills. Despite Sonny's orders, MK sneaks inside and steals a book bearing the logo of Azra. While inside, he witnesses Tilda and the apprentices escaping, but is ignored when he calls out to her. Meanwhile, Quinn engages in a fierce battle with the Widow, both displaying masterful swordsmanship. Despite her skill, Quinn gains the upper hand, but he suddenly collapses due to a severe headache. As the Widow prepares to finish him off, Sonny intervenes, allowing her to escape through a secret passage. After the skirmish, MK shows Sonny the book, but Sonny is infuriated by his disobedience and confiscates it. As punishment, Sonny forces MK to stand at the edge of their training pit and pushes him to instill a sense of fear. Afterwards, Sonny takes MK to meet the former regent, Waldo, and challenges him to a fight as a lesson. Despite MK's skepticism due to Waldo being in a wheelchair, Waldo proves to be fast and strong enough to defeat MK using only his arms. When MK finally surrenders, Waldo reminds him to look beyond the obvious. In the Widow's territory, she and her pupils discover an old home that they can use as shelter. The Widow instructs Tilda to retrieve Angelica before Sonny can reach her. Meanwhile, Vale is brought to the fort to tend to Ryder. Although Lydia doubts the efficacy of the bone drill, Vale explains that Ryder's swollen brain requires urgent treatment to prevent his death. The surgery is successful, and Ryder soon regains consciousness. Upon waking, Quinn immediately interrogates Ryder about who framed him. Ryder explains, leading Sonny to be tasked with finding Angelica. Moments later, Sonny and MK arrive at the town, with Sonny instructing MK to wait outside while he locates Angelica. At that moment, Tilda arrives and slaps MK, sparking an argument about their loyalties. Inside the building, Sonny incapacitates Angelica's client, while she retrieves her sword and wounds Sonny in the chest during their ensuing confrontation. Despite her efforts, Sonny gains the upper hand and demands to know the Widow's whereabouts. Angelica escapes through a window, prompting Sonny to pursue her through the balconies. He eventually corners her, but she opts to take her own life rather than surrender. Witnessing Angelica's demise, MK urges Tilda to flee. Later they visit Vale, who tends to Sonny's wound, piquing MK's interest upon discovering her ability to read. Meanwhile, Quinn informs Sonny that his attack on the Widow has stirred unrest among the other Barons, prompting a call for negotiation. Quinn suggests forming an alliance with Baron Jacoby and tasks Sonny with arranging a meeting, given his acquaintance with Ziffer, Jacoby's regent. After Sonny departs, MK sneaks into his room to retrieve the book. In the evening, Sonny meets with Ziffer, who suggests killing Quinn could prevent war among the Barons. However, Sonny remains loyal and refuses, prompting Ziffer to agree to try arranging the meeting but offers no guarantees. Meanwhile, MK visits Vale and asks her to decipher the book, but she is unable to recognize the language. When someone enters, MK quickly hides. The visitor is Quinn, who asks Vale for assistance similar to what she provided for Ryder. Vale gives him a concoction to weaken him and slow the growth of his tumor. 
Later, Tilda, covered in blood, pretends to be in distress in a forest. She stops a car for help, but when the occupants exit, the widow and her allies ambush and kill them. Tilda discovers gold in the car while the widow takes a pickaxe from one of the deceased. It is then revealed that the widow's army captured a clipper during the invasion, and she uses the pickaxe to execute him. In the evening, Sonny observes MK training with a combat dummy. Suddenly, MK considers activating his hidden power, but ultimately refrains from doing so. The next morning, Sonny takes MK to a remote location and cuts his arm, explaining the need to understand his power. MK's eyes darken, and with one blow, he incapacitates Sonny before losing consciousness himself. Upon awakening, Sonny advises MK to focus on a safe or pure memory when his power manifests again. Meanwhile, Quinn receives the head of the deceased Clipper bearing the word Parley on his forehead, along with a note from Jacoby accusing Quinn of attacking his gold transport. Quinn instructs Ryder to attend the Parley, but Ryder proposes his own terms when meeting with Ziffer. Later, Sonny discovers Vale conversing with MK about the book, leaving him dismayed to realize they've been collaborating to decipher it, indicating MK's lack of knowledge about escaping the Badlands. After MK departs, Vale confides in Sonny about Quinn's tumor. Meanwhile, Jade ends her relationship with Ryder to prepare for her impending wedding. Enraged, Ryder accuses her of naivety, suggesting that Quinn's second wife didn't die naturally and is now in danger. Jade consults a servant who reveals seeing Lydia gathering poisonous flowers before the second wife's demise. The next day, Sonny selects six apprentices to accompany him to the parley, leaving MK frustrated by his exclusion. Upon arrival at the City of the Dead, Sonny apprehends someone nearby, only to discover it's MK. He reprimands MK and assigns him to stand guard while they attend the meeting. During the parley, Ziffer presents Baron Jacoby, who doubts Quinn's claims about the widow's involvement. MK notices Tilda arriving and throwing a pickaxe, alerting Sonny in time to prevent Quinn's assassination. A skirmish erupts between Jacoby's and Quinn's forces, prompting Sonny to pursue Tilda while being intercepted by Ziffer. As they clash, MK confronts Tilda, and their battle intensifies until Tilda wounds him, triggering his latent power. Desperate, Tilda attempts to fend off MK with a vase, but it fails to affect him. MK seizes Tilda by the neck and hurls her against a wall. Tilda evades his attacks and calls his name, snapping him out of his trance before he collapses. Sensing Sonny's presence, Tilda distracts him with another shuriken before fleeing. Meanwhile, casualties mount on both sides of the conflict, leading to an imminent duel between Jacoby and Quinn. Sonny intervenes, presenting Tilda's shuriken as evidence of the widow's manipulation. Jacoby reveals that Quinn's actions incurred the widow's wrath, and insists that Quinn must deal with her to restore peace among the barons. Returning to the fort, Quinn's group discovers that the widow and her forces have slaughtered the clippers. A surviving maid reveals that the apprentices were bribed with gold. Enraged, Quinn orders Sonny to capture the widow for retribution. Elsewhere, Ziffer deceives Ryder by taking him to see the widow instead of Jacoby. The widow offers Ryder a chance to claim his father's position and Ziffer to attain Jacoby's in exchange for delivering MK to her. Frustrated by his father's lack of belief in him, Ryder contemplates the offer. Ryder agrees to the deal with the widow. Later, Sonny travels to the docks and leverages a favor owed to Waldo to secure an audience with the River King. Seeking a way out of the Badlands, Sonny learns that the River King desires the return of a boy responsible for killing others in a shipment of apprentices. In exchange for this boy, identified as MK, the River King offers safe passage for Sonny. Upon returning to the fort, Sonny continues MK's training and questions him about the incident with the dead people on the boat. In a terrifying moment, MK's eyes darken, and he seemingly pushes Sonny off a ledge, only for Sonny to awaken from the nightmare. At Vale's house, Sonny examines the book and discovers his compass fits into a slot, causing the pages to move. Meanwhile, the widow welcomes boys freed from Quinn's fort, promising them a better life while also testing for the boy with the secret power. At Quinn's fort, Ryder shows Waldo the necklace and receives advice to seek out his grandfather for more information. Quinn attempts to address the new recruits but is overcome by a severe headache, prompting his retreat indoors. Vale administers medication, and Quinn reveals to her that Sonny, not himself, was responsible for her parents' deaths. Meanwhile, Ryder visits his grandfather Penrith, who explains that the necklace originates from Azra, a mythical place. Penrith instructs a cleric to inform the apostles in the fort about the presence of a Dark One. The following day, Sonny takes a small group, including MK, into the forest to search for clues regarding the widow's whereabouts. MK discovers a butterfly shuriken, 
but Sunny prevents him from touching it, triggering a trap. Sunny skillfully activates additional traps to secure their path, but they stumble upon a clipper caught in one. Despite freeing him, the clipper's leg injury renders him unable to assist further. As night descends, the group sets up camp, with Sunny assigning MK to the first watch. Tilda covertly approaches MK and warns him that the widow suspects he possesses the mysterious power, cautioning that its usage may weaken him over time. In truth, excessive use of his power would eventually lead to MK's demise. Tilda warns him that everyone, including the widow and even Sunny, seeks to exploit his abilities. Suddenly, Sunny appears and subdues Tilda to capture her. Despite MK's attempt to explain Tilda's assistance in controlling his power, Sunny insists on interrogating her to ascertain the widow's whereabouts. Apprentice Bale provokes Tilda, leading to her biting his neck. Since Tilda remains defiant, Sunny decides to transport her to the fort. The following morning, the widow and her warriors discover Tilda's dagger adorned with blue fabric stuck in a tree. Enraged, the widow orders a message be sent to their spy in the fort to arrange a rescue. At the fort, Jade delivers food to Quinn but collapses from a seizure. In the dungeons, Sunny implores Tilda to reveal the widow's hideout, emphasizing his reluctance to harm her. However, the widow appears and incapacitates MK with her whip. Sunny engages her in combat, their clash echoing throughout the dungeon. As the intense battle between Sunny and the widow continues, they find themselves in an armory, utilizing every weapon available to them. Despite going through numerous weapons and even resorting to a torch, Sunny eventually gains the upper hand, severely injuring the Widow. Meanwhile, MK frees Tilda, only to be swiftly incapacitated by Bale. Tilda retaliates, but Bale blinds her with dirt, allowing him to brutally assault her. When MK regains consciousness, Bale locks him in a cell to exact revenge for Tilda's bite. Determined to save her, MK activates his power with his own blood, sending Bale flying and inadvertently causing his demise upon landing on spikes. The commotion interrupts Sunny's attempt to finish off the Widow, leading to Bale's death. Witnessing MK's uncontrollable power, Sunny rushes to his aid, causing MK to collapse. Seizing the opportunity, Tilda and the Widow escape through a hidden tunnel while Sunny gives chase. However, by the time Sunny reaches the outside, they have vanished. In the dungeons, Quinn observes the events unfold. The following day, Sunny presents Bale's head to the River King, deceitfully claiming it to be MK's. Believing the deception due to their similar appearance, the River King instructs Sunny to bring his companions at midnight or risk being left behind. Afterward, Sunny visits Vale's clinic and urges her not to check on Quinn that day, as it could jeopardize their escape plan. Vale confronts Sunny about her parents' deaths, questioning if he was responsible. Sunny clarifies that it was Quinn's doing, prompting Vale's distress over her inaction to stop him. Uncertain about fleeing with Sunny, Vale expresses her need to contemplate their situation. Meanwhile, one of Penrith's associates meets with three monks at an old cathedral, informing them of Penrith's discovery of a dark one and presenting the wanted poster. The monks depart with a box in their possession. At the fort, Lydia tends to Jade, only to face Quinn's wrathful interruption. Convinced that Lydia poisoned Jade, Quinn angrily expels her from the fort despite her protests of innocence. Accompanied by clippers, Lydia is escorted out of the fort where Ryder returns her religious icons and bids her farewell. Lydia warns Ryder that he won't survive long without her before departing. She eventually reaches her father's home, seeking redemption and presenting the icons as proof of her sincerity. Penrith insists that Lydia renounce all material possessions and commit to never leaving again before leading her to undergo a cleansing ritual in the frog pool. After emerging from the water, Lydia receives a warm welcome from Penrith, who embraces her. Meanwhile in town, Vale is unexpectedly captured and brought to the Widow to tend to her wound. Vale administers treatment and stitches, leaving behind three bottles, two containing poison and one medicine. She agrees to disclose which is which only after safely returning to her clinic. The Widow instructs Tilda to escort Vale home, and Vale covertly reveals to Tilda the medicinal bottle's identity. She emphasizes that forcing young girls into combat is unjust. Tilda now holds the power to decide whether to save her mother or not. Meanwhile, Quinn accuses Sonny of being a spy for the Widow and orders his confinement in the dungeon, where he is chained to the bars by other clippers. Following this, Quinn summons MK and offers him a deal. In exchange for his compliance, he promises to spare Sonny and provide protection for Tilda at the fort. Knowing MK's lack of experience, Quinn suggests taking him to a brothel to practice intimacy to avoid disappointing Tilda in the future. Meanwhile, Waldo attempts to visit Sonny, but is barred from entry by a clipper. In response, 
Waldo incapacitates him and releases Sonny, urging him to flee before the Widow's impending attack. Sonny realizes Waldo's true allegiance as the Widow's informant. Before departing, Waldo returns a necklace he took from Sonny in his childhood, revealing its similarity to MK's. In town, MK senses something amiss due to the absence of any other individuals. As MK continues his rampage, Sonny confronts Quinn, fatally stabbing him with his sword. Meanwhile, MK easily defeats Jacoby and overpowers him, throwing him into a building. Ryder narrowly escapes as MK is about to attack him, only to be stopped by Sonny. MK pushes Sonny aside and continues his assault, tossing Zipper away when she attempts to intervene. Just then, three monks arrive and engage MK in combat, targeting his pressure points to disable him. Sonny, unwilling to let them take MK away, fights against two of the monks. Despite being struck several times, Sonny manages to hold his own until the third monk joins the fray, overpowering Sonny and throwing him against the car. However, Sonny quickly recovers and retaliates, injuring the monk before the monks regroup and focus their efforts on subduing MK together. In the darkness, the monk's eyes turn dark, signaling a sinister shift. Together, they overpower Sonny, breaking his sword and hurling him into a building. As they capture MK and drive off, a mysterious figure finds the battered Sonny, their intentions unclear in the aftermath of the chaos. Vale arrives in town to find a grim scene of bodies, with Sonny nowhere to be seen except for his abandoned sword. Meanwhile, Sonny wakes up on a ship, bound to a beam, confronted by the River King who presents Bale's head as evidence of Sonny's betrayal. Knowing he's not a killer, the River King opts to sell Sonny rather than execute him. At the same time, MK awakens to find himself being transported out of the Badlands in a box, unable to break free. If you like the movie, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with friends and loved ones. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.